Welcome back everyone. Today I got another song analysis video for you guys. I'm doing A Cure for Common by Ka. This was recently suggested by a viewer. Shout out to you. You got awesome taste in music. Eastern Medicine, Western Illness is a great album. The uh, Mock Homie song on here is one of my favorite Mock Homie songs of all time. It's unfortunate I can't find his lyrics anywhere. He's so tedious about taking down his lyrics. So it's going to be hard to cover Mock, unfortunately. I'll do my best to try to find his lyrics where I can. But for now, let's do another Ka song because this man is an absolute poet. This song's a bit longer, so this video might take a bit. But let's get right into it. So if it's lessons of discretion, no question it's Ka. Um, this is just referencing like his underground style, how low-key he is. Um, he kind of revels in that, which is cool. Other artists like Mock Hami, Billy Woods, MF Doom, all three of which hide their face quite extensively so that they don't pop up in, in popular culture as much, which is cool. I like when rappers kind of enjoy that underground. It can get pretentious, obviously, sometimes, but for the most part, it is pretty cool that rappers kind of like to stay in the underground um, like Ka does. It's filled with dreams and wishes that still seem seditious. So I think he's just saying like here, like his goals and his dreams in life still seem seditious to some people. Not too much to read into there. This next line though, for corrosive minds, I wrote some lines. I hope they find amazing poetry. Um, obviously referencing people who are going through depression, not connecting with the world, feel like an outsider. Maybe you're hurting, going through some stuff. Ka wrote some lines that he hopes you find. Um, rhyme supposed to shine like a stunning sun soul design amazing rhyme scheme there not too much to say on that i think he's just saying like he shines with his rhymes that's the way that he brings light into the world think good people who spoke for mine when evil folks malign malign is uh derivative of malicious so just meaning with like evil intent so this is an important line because it's it's important to like have that trust tested with your friends and family if they really do say good things about you no matter what it's easy to say good things about somebody when they're doing well but when everybody's like hating on somebody bringing somebody down it's hard to still say good things about them and we're all going to go through that in our lives where we're going to mess up somewhere and uh, people around us are going to be annoyed for that and they're going to bring down some hate on us which is just their way of checking us you know it's not always personal but in those moments if there's people around you who are still like hey no this guy's a really good guy he just messed up here um you need people like that the people who will still have your back even when you are in your lowest place so i think that that's what cause referencing there can't be demonized i sped the wise and chose divine so he's saying he can't be be possessed by demons i mean everybody can but you can be less able to be demonized if you do search for the divine i guess sped the wise is an interesting line because you can speed up your wisdom in life if you go through um extreme experiences traumatic experiences this can give you wisdom rather quickly i've met people in my life who are you know in their 20s that are much more wise than people that i've met in their 30s 40s 50s and so on it's rare usually people kind of mature on the same scale as their peers but if you read a lot of books, that's another way to do it. You know, packing your brain full of knowledge or experiencing a lot at a young age. This can kind of gear you up for deeper wisdom earlier, which I think is what he was getting at there. From caustic block, lost a lot, no force could stop. Um, just in reference to Brownsville here, one of the toughest neighborhoods in the U.S. Obviously, this is where cause from I've mentioned before. Lost a lot, no force could stop. So force could be like God couldn't stop it, uh, greater force, whatever greater force you believe in. It could be force like police force. Even the police force couldn't stop what he was losing. Um, sometimes the system's just so broken that even if all the cops were saints, it, it wouldn't help. And uh, I think that that's what he's getting at there. Would look to put you underground if you got thoughts to pop. This is like tribal mentality. Sometimes when you're in a, a more primal tribal group, um, tough neighborhood like Brownsville, prison, uh, third world country, sometimes they're more in a primal mindset where they're looking for outsiders constantly. So if you're the one who's creative, you're the one who's having outside thoughts, kind of siding with the other guy, you know, maybe he's got a point. Or you're um, 
just bringing up creative, unique thoughts. Sometimes the tribe could be like, we got to get rid of this guy. He's dangerous. Uh, that certainly happens a lot. You can read about that, and it's quite sad. Um, the burning of the witch trials, I know that's a super, super complicated piece of history, but part of that could be in this too. Like that just that tribal mentality. Like if you're different, we're going to kill you. Um, yeah, that's what Kaz getting at there. Come round, Bill. Don't pass us if you down Phil. Phil and Bill, obviously, playing with the names there. Bill could mean money. Phil, Dr. Phil, I don't know. I'm not too sure what this line means. Like I've said before, if you guys have any interpretations, please leave them in the comments. I love to hear what you guys think. I think for any of my analysis videos, whether it's analyzing songs or analyzing movies, I like to make my presentation. You know, that's my fun with this channel. But... The second part of the fun is to hear what you guys have to say in the comments and, and us to discuss and um, and find deeper meanings to this art because as much as I can do this alone, it, I, I need help from everybody, right? So everybody's got unique thoughts on, on art, unique interpretations, and I want to hear all of them because that's, that's how you understand art deeper. So hopefully that's the goal with these types of videos. But um, yeah, I'm getting a little off track here. Been conditioned to sound ill, but this is Brownsville. So just a sick line there. And then we get into the next verse. Almost missed great and missed hate. I fixate on the, on the broken nine. On the broke nine. I don't know what the broke nine means. I mean, nines usually mean nine millimeters in rap songs. I don't think this is saying that he was fixated on the broken gun. But uh, the first line is very interesting here. I almost missed great amidst hate. So this is a great lesson for those of you who are pursuing creative ventures. Um, much like myself, it can be hard to see where the greatness is when you're in the middle of grinding for something. And when you're really grinding for something, when you're doing something creative, when you're pushing boundaries, people around you are going to hate on you um, naturally. And they, they should, honestly, because you're kind of pushing out. You're going off the beaten path. They should like check you and, and like make sure that your new ideas are somewhat useful. That's important. But you don't want to get caught up in that hate. You don't want to listen to it too long. You want to take the constructive criticism and leave the hate to the side. So hopefully when people are hating on you, hopefully it's done in somewhat of a nice way because um, there's no need for needless hate. But amidst that stuff, yeah, it can be hard to see the greatness and Ka saying here he almost missed it um, amidst all the hate. But he'll reference in a further line something similar. Decided, deciding how I'm surviving outside, no one is bovine. Bovine, I think, is in reference to cattle. So he's saying, like, getting into the outside world. You know, when you're a child, you're in the inside world. You're sheltered. You live at home. And then you have to go into the outside world. Some people are forced into the outside world very young, and it's tragic. And some people never get out into the outside world. They just stay inside, which is honestly equally as tragic. But for those of you who get out into the outside world and pursue meaning in life and find your journey, find your adventure, um, for those people, you need to find a way to survive. And that's what Kaz referencing here. He doesn't want to be a cattle. He doesn't want to be a sheep. He doesn't want to be part of the herd. He wants to find his own way to survive, I think. So some spit and rep like they had shit in check, but show no sign. I think this is just referencing to people like faking that they're with gangs. Um, I could be wrong. Again, let me know in the comments if you guys have any other, other thoughts. But I think this is in reference to like faking, repping gangs and not knowing the gang signs or, or something like that. Um, not too sure. but Or seeking restraint deep in the paint. They won't post mine. A cool little basketball reference here. So he's saying like because he's deep in the paint, he's grinding. Um, kind of a reference back to that line just a couple ago. Um, he's saying that nobody's going to defend him. Nobody's going to post him up in the paint. Like he is, he's getting it. He's scoring the basket. Cool line there. Um, the lonely muddy troll and do me ugly. I'm so fine. I think this is in reference to like people with their hoods on that are kind of loners in the corner. The, those people that those are the dangerous people in life, really. Like it's not the leaders of the groups. It's not the, the main bully that you should be worried about. Um, some of us know <laughs> unfortunately that you know there's a stereotype of the school shooter now you know the kid who sits in the back of the class with his hoodie up nobody talks to him that truly is the person that you need to be most afraid of um they're not the strongest person they're the weakest person and that's the reason why you need to be afraid of them because uh 
because they don't they don't have anything to lose in in some sense. So I think that's what Kaz getting at here. Although it's it's an, another tough line to to break apart. Knowledge of rap. All they got is sack running through my old lines. So I think this is like just you know referencing young rappers or just other rappers in the game that don't have a deep knowledge of of hip hop, um, and they keep biting his lines. This is something that you should never do if you're writing poetry, if you're writing raps, if you're writing anything, don't steal from other artists. Like if you want to truly be as good as somebody, if you like read a bar and you're like, I want to write something as good as this, write something like it, but make it unique. And if you look at it and you're like, well, this isn't as good as what this guy wrote. I should just steal this. No, don't steal that. You want to, you want to be able to make that on your own. Um, so grind what you have and just do it over and over and over and over again. And maybe by your hundredth line, you'll finally get something that's of equal quality. And then you're actually on the level of the guy that you've been looking up to. So it just takes a little bit of grinding, but never steal from other artists. Um, on some level, you can understand why people would steal food or, or money, but to steal art from other people is just a different level of disgusting to me. So that's kind of what he's referencing here. Don't steal from other artists. It's uh, not good. Uh, flack heightened and backbiting is what famine caused. Um, heightened senses, staying on alert. This happens when you're famished. Um, I've mentioned before in an earlier Ka song analysis that when you're starving, you're not the same person. You become starvation. Like that is you now. Your, your ego contracts and you become hunger. So now all you're thinking about is hunger. You will... You will do crazy things when you're hungry. Like, you guys have no idea. There, there's um, a story out there that during the Hollow Demur, when uh, when Russia starved Ukraine in 1933, that they were passing out posters saying, "Don't forget, it's wrong to eat your children," which is intense to think about. Six million people died in the Hollow Demur, and Yes, there was rampant cannibalism, even amongst families, which is something to think about. Like, if you want to go read more about it, it's dark and disturbing. But I think people should, you know, open their eyes to that a little bit and know that, like, you're capable of some crazy things, especially when you're hungry. When you're starving, there have been people across history who have ate their own children to stay alive. So, so yeah, hunger is no joke. Sorry to go into a dark territory there but now live and let at sometimes the biggest threat man ignores so now live and let die is usually the word that comes after that but i think ka purposely removed that and put um at times the biggest threat man ignores which is death or the threat of death which is true when people are possessed by all sorts of things whether it's the seven deadly sins greed gluttony um being possessed by that sort of mentality or being possessed by maybe a positive one like love um, sometimes you can have blinders on and you totally ignore the thing that is mortally threatening right in front of you. Um, there could be a tiger like right in front of you and you could like ignore it in certain states of mind. It's very interesting. I won't get too deep into the psychology of that, but very interesting line there by Ka. No fortune raps caught the claps for any grand applause. I don't understand this line either. It sounds like he's saying like, when he raps, if you're applauding, he's going to shoot you. <laughs> I don't think that's what he means, but it's a weird line. And I'm, that's just like surface level what I get. Cause claps, I usually think like guns and, and for any grand applause, like I'm not too sure what he meant by that line. Um, nor should I be. I mean, I don't think I should be certain about any of these lines, but I'm doing my best to try to bring you guys some of the, the deeper thoughts I have about them through righteous sound, quiet it down to raise my voice. This is in reference to how his songs are actually put together. So he uses very janky, just disjointed beats and uh, heavy samples. And the beats are quiet. You know, they're quieter. They're more low-key, toned down. And I think this is for a reason. It's so that he can rap how he raps. He raps very spoken word. It's almost like he's telling you his rhymes. He's not so much rapping them like uh, Kendrick Lamar or a little Wayne would, where they're kind of flowing with the words and having fun with the pronunciation of them. He's more so writing poetry, saying it to you and putting it over a beat. It's like pure, pure hip hop. Um, on like the, the most pure level, he's really dissected it and like re put it, put it back together in, in a cool way. I really love cause sound. And I think this is him just referencing how he does that. 
Mental social cops sent to poach you. What's your cage of choice? Mm, that's a hard line. Cops sent to poach you. What's your cage of choice? Is your cage of choice jail, prison, stay here in the streets for the rest of your life? Maybe I tell your, your buddies that you snitched. You know, it could be a, a number of different things. But for those of you who fear being put into cages, I know some people that's like one of their most more common fears. That is a hard line saying like, what's your cage of choice? There's a lot of different ways you can be caged in life and be shackled. Um, it's not just with like literal chains on your hands. Anyways, life's a ride. Some nights I cry, some days rejoice cool line there you know life is a ride and uh some nights some nights you're going to be down some nights you're going to be up i think everyone experiences this this is the thing like it doesn't matter if you have a hundred billion dollars it doesn't matter if you're poor you're both people are going to have days where they're depressed and where they're up it's, that's just life like that's just how it goes it, it doesn't matter if you have 10 billion dollars you're still going to go through divorces like best jeff bezos you're still going to have troubles like how do I teach my kids the lessons of life? What's my meaning in life? Is it really just like selling Amazon product? Like there's so many existential questions that come, even if you're rich, that like it doesn't, everybody goes through this stuff. Everybody lives life the same in some ways. So I think he's referencing that a little bit. Um, pride or scandal required to handle. Wish my J was moist. Pride or scandal. Not too sure there. Required a handle. So when people were too prideful or if there was a scandal, you know, somebody cheating on somebody, he had to handle, handle it either with his hands or with a gun. Different ways of interpreting it. Um, wish my J was moist. So I think this is just like he wishes his joint was moist. I don't really know. I don't exactly know what he meant there. Like That could be what he meant, but. For chill children, I'm still building, breaking ground. Um, so building a future for your children, um, breaking ground. To go off of the building here for a second, one way to interpret Noah's Ark, um, the famous biblical story, is that you're supposed to build a house for your family. Now, in old times, you would literally build a house so that you could live somewhere away from your parents and that you could start your own family, right? So... There's that obvious reference. Nowadays, most people don't build their own houses, but building a house can be more than that. It could be, it could be working on yourself to make sure that you're a good father. It could be buying books to make sure that you can teach your kids and they can learn how to read. It could be so many different things that you, you, you want to build an ark. You want to build... And the reason why they use an ark, I think, in the Bible is because it's something that moves forward. You know, an ark moves forward. It goes through the waves. It goes through life. You live on it, but you go through life in it. And I think that there's some reference there to building a house and building a family. It's just one way of interpreting that Bible story. There's like thousands of ways of interpreting it. But I think that could be somewhat useful in dissecting this line. Um, I'll be raw when you mature for those now to hate the sound. This is a cool line, and I've never heard a rapper quite say this before. But he's saying like, He's going to stay raw. He's going to stay himself. He's going to stay janky and a little bit disjointed and, and not really have the most impressive rhyming, like quick rhyming ability that like an Eminem has. He's going to stay raw. He's going to stay how he is so that when you mature, when you grow up, you can enjoy what he's putting out. So not everybody's going to love Ka. I understand that the people watching this video, if you're watching this far, you probably love Ka. Um, or maybe you're just really interested in, in his songs and you want to go listen after. If, if you're one of those people, awesome. Thank you for watching. But um, this is a pretty, it's an eclectic kind of music taste. It's not accessible to everybody. So when you mature through life, you tend to get deeper into other rabbit holes. I've, I've met people in my life like bikers, like true bikers, people who you would not think this of them, but like in their 40s, they ended up getting into like Bjork and stuff. And I'm like, wow, that's really cool. And it's like some people, it just takes time, you know, for them to mature and then appreciate. Um, I, w I don't want to say deeper music. In this case, I think it is deeper music. You can tell by the poetry, but just like more interesting, unique, creative music, I guess. Eclectic music, you know, like the opposite of popular. I, uh, it, it somewhat annoys me, the people who like only listen 
to what's on the radio. They only listen to Drake. They only listen to the Beatles. It's like, okay, that's so boring. Like, <laughs> find anything else that, like, fewer people have listened to. And then, like, then I can somewhat understand your taste a bit better. But when you're only listening to the things that are literally made for everyone, you know, it's... I'm not going to speak too much on that. If you're here, you probably agree with me on those points, but um, yeah, I'll move on. I hopped a few obstacles others couldn't make around. So this is in reference to like coming out of Brownsville, coming out of the streets and the slums. Obstacles that you that other people can't get around. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that's the mark of an outlier. That's an, that's the mark of a successful person is somebody who gets around obstacles that other people fail at. You'll see this all the time in life. Like people will have dreams and they'll never get past the first stage of starting that dream. Like you'll talk to them, they know so much about movies, and you're like, w like what's your f what's your favorite part about the movies? They're like, I love the writing. Like I, I love like reading scripts, and you're like, wow, like you really love this art form. Have you written a script yet? Oh no, man, I just don't have the time or whatever. They make up like some sort of excuse. Any excuse is just bad you should try to get rid of all the excuses you can in your life but yeah like some people they just put blockers up and they don't ever actually get to hitting the first obstacle and it's like once you build momentum you're going to start clearing obstacles with greater and greater ease and that's what really makes you into a person so even though maybe your artistic ventures might seem impossible I, I always thought, you know, making a YouTube channel that seemed a little bit out in the distance for me until I did it. And now I do it almost every week. So it's really just consistency and just trying it. Um, anyways, I'm glad Ho Ka hopped around the obstacles he did because he gave us great music. In Noah's words, uh, tying back to Noah's Ark that I <laughs> mentioned, I urge you to get submerged. It's safe to drown. Okay. This is a deep line. <laughs> I urge you to get submerged. So I urge you to di dive deep, dive deep into art, dive deep into history, dive deep into science, whatever pulls you, whatever pulls you in life, dive deep into it. It's okay. It's, it's safe to drown. So it's, it's okay to go deep. It's okay to get intellectually obsessed with a topic. It's okay to become consumed by art. That's, that's okay. That's how you learn it and understand it deeper and and engage with life more deeply and i think another way you could take this kind of tying back to the to the hollow de Moor and stuff is reading about those atrocities reading about the worst things that have ever happened in human history has not only helped me see evil in the world but it's also helped me to see evil in myself and that has been incredibly rewarding even though it's tough even though there's images in my mind that will never leave, I'll be consumed by them for the rest of my life, just photos and videos I've seen. Um, I think it's important that I did that because it, it pulled the poles for me. It, it showed me just how dark it can get, and it made me appreciate just how good I have it. And, um, and that's part of it. That's part of getting submerged and not being afraid to drown, like... Go deep. Test yourself. You have no idea how strong you are. Like, people have no idea how resilient they are. You, you really don't know your own strength until you test it. So, man, that's only like half the song. <laughs> Verse 2 now. This is going to be a long video. I'm sure I have to pass now before mass bow to the stern. Before the mass bow to the stern. This is a cool line. I think this is referencing age, actually. I think he's saying, like, he's at the middle point in his life. He's at the the, the mass bow, and he's going to the stern. I think that's what it means. I'm not too sure. Or he's just passing through all of life, bow to stern. I, I'm not too sure. It, it could be that. It could be an age reference. Though firm, come through with solution and rouse concern. So even though he's firm, even though he's tough, maybe strict, maybe he's a strict father, come through with a solution and with concern. Um, yeah, this could be in reference to like fathers just in general. Sometimes fathers are very strict. It may seem like they just hate you, like they want to put you in a cage, but you got to try to find 
if if there is any the the true concern and the true um the true effort to try to put forth a solution to actually help you sometimes tough love can be can be hard to accept um i definitely have a lot of experience with that so pro thought hold court the crowd is adjourned pro thought hold court the crowd is adjourned i need help with that one you guys can let me know in the comments there's a bunch of different ways you can pull that one apart hold court the crowd is adjourned Ugh. that's a tough one i would have to sit down i'll let you guys figure that one out um never slept rep the public official crowd on my term Again, I'm not too sure. Rep the public official crowd on my term. It's got to be somewhat in reference to the previous line, but again, I'm not exactly certain what he's pointing at there. I'm here dealing, now healing, feeling, never shouted a germ. So he's here dealing, now healing, feeling, never shouted a germ. So I think he's like trying to put out messages, songs, bars that will heal people that will help people that will push them further in life push them upwards rather than bring them down so he never shouted germs so he never spit um vulgarity for the sake of vulgarity which a lot of rappers do i mean i could name you so many rappers that are just rapping just just to like just to push people's buttons just to like say things that are outlandish just for the sake of it and there's no really deeper thought put behind it. So I think that's what caused referencing there. Or I was saving babies when their houses were burnt. Now, I believe, it's been a while since I've read Cause Bio, but I believe he was a firefighter in Brownsville. So I think this is actually a direct reference to him having been a firefighter and saving babies in real life. Um, I believe that's true. I'm like 95% sure. If somebody can confirm that in the comments, I believe he was a firefighter which again just like adds so much to him like the stuff you see as a firefighter i have like three fire firefighters in my family and yeah they've told me some pretty crazy stories i strained with purpose when the art became a circus again referencing what i was just saying the the rap game the rap scene is like all over the place it is a circus face tattoos, dyeing your hair a trillion different colors, putting, making your hair into chains. I've seen some rapper do that. And then just the horrible, horrible lyrics that have no substance to them and just, like I said, are just vulgarity for the sake of it. Uh, for example, the song WAP, I, I just, I don't see much artistic value to that song. It, if you guys disagree, I would love to hear a case made for it, but I think that's what caused referencing here. He strained with purpose, with purpose, when art became a circus. It's a hard, hard line, man. I, What other rapper is writing a line as deep as that, you know? Like, is Little Uzi really writing stuff like that? I get his music's fun. I like some of the Uzi songs, but... <laughs> so could tell I'm not a sellout in this flagrant game of merchants... Hmm. So you can tell Ka's not a sellout just because nobody knows who Ka is. His records aren't widely sold. You kind of have to go and find Ka or have somebody tell you about Ka. So definitely not a sellout in this flagrant game of merchants. So again, going back to the circus thing, it is, I can see in this rap game, a lot of these hip hop artists are making music to make money. That's, that's the main goal. It's literally to buy cars to buy chains and that's it that's that's the goal of the of making the music which shouldn't be it's it's just the way the music industry has distorted everything it's it's disgusting but the music should be about purpose it should be a message it, be, it should be something that you feel in your heart that you want to tell the world that's true artistic expression when you have like 17 people making a beat for you that's gonna sound infectious because there's like a science to it um, you could basically go on and say whatever you want. Like as long as you're charismatic and have somewhat of a unique image, you can say basically whatever you want. And there's a lot of hip hop artists in the game today that say nonsense <laughs> and cause referencing that here as well. Beast fear or free spirit clear that you can't 
chain a purchase. Clear that you can't change a purchase. Chain, chain, not change. Hmm. Beast fear, free spirit. I think this is a reference to the merchant line that I just read saying like, once you're pursuing money, you're, you're shackled to it. Like you're a prisoner to the system now. I've said this before many times. Like if your goal in life is to make money, you got to reevaluate your goals. Like that should not be your goal. That should just be an outcome of whatever you produce or whatever you make or whatever you're doing. Uh, money should never be the target because then you become a slave to the money. You, you're just a sheep in the system now. Um, I think that's what he's saying there. Like you become a chain to the purchase, something like that. Mm. Yeah, it costs such a deep writer, man. Proper gospel from block apostles that never came to churches. Hmm. Wow. This one. This one's interesting. Proper gospel from block apostles. So people on the block yelling out proper gospel. I'm going to assume that he does mean proper gospel. And he's not saying it sarcastically. I mean, when you go through life, when you experience things, yeah, you're going to get a wisdom that's sometimes deeper than what you can hear in church. That's true. There's some truth to that. Um, I've definitely gone to churches in my life where I'm like, what, like, what are you saying? <laughs> why, why should I listen to you? You know, that's definitely happened to me before. I, I have gone to churches where I thought like the priest was amazing. And I'm like, wow, this guy is like lived a full life and he's got some wisdom that I actually want to hear. But there are churches out there where I'm like, what are you saying right now? <laughs> um, I could just go to a block and listen to a listen to the gospel from a block apostle <laughs> such a cool rhyme scheme too wasn't suitable for beautiful women i treated ugly this is a cool line too because he's saying he wasn't suitable for beautiful women pause i treated ugly so he did get beautiful women but he treated them horribly <laughs> um there's some humor to that but yeah it's you don't want to treat women in your life badly in in any case uh yeah, interesting line there. All those moments they was lonely, only tried to feed and love me. Mm. Mm. All those moments they was lonely, only tried to feed and love me. So I think this is in reference to the women that he mis mistreated. Yeah. Damn, that's a deep line. I don't have too much to say about it. I think it's a little bit obvious, but... Damn, such a deep writer. Was just hard to be vested when you desperate. Needing money. Now encourage, read, and study instead of deeds that leave you bloody. <sighs> That's a deep line. Now encourage, read, and study instead of deeds that leave you bloody. So don't go out there robbing and stealing, acting like a gangster. Even if you are from Brownsville, even if you are from the hood, don't go out there acting like, like you're tough because you're going to get shot. I mean, what comes around goes around like everybody has their day. There's a million ways of saying this. Like if you play the game, you're going to get hit. You know, Makami, I think he says, if you're old enough to cross the street, you're old enough to get hit. That's, an, that, that's another great line kind of references this, but yeah, go and study and read. And I've, I've said it on this channel before, but read books, like read books. It'll pay off. Whatever you're interested in, it doesn't even have to be hard books. It can be easy books. Wherever you're at, start by reading something. If you don't like reading, if you find it so tedious to sit down there and stare at the words, put on an audiobook. When you're driving around in your car, you're alone. You don't have the friends around. You don't have to be blasting your cool music that we know you have your awesome music taste. Um, blast an audiobook. Like, it'll pay off. Once you once you finish the audiobook, you'll feel so good. You'll feel like, damn, I have a book that I could talk about now. Like, if anybody comes to me, I could be like, yeah, I read this book, and here's what I thought about it. Have you read it? It's awesome. And if you read books, you stack them up. You you gain knowledge. Like, it's so important. It's so important to learn about the world to to study it. It will pay off. Like. Yeah, very important lesson there by Calm. Glad he put that in there. I'm that one, want feel, keep it one hun real. I'm that one one's feel, 
keep it 100 real. So keep it 100 real is just keep it 100, keep it honest. So I'm that one want feel. He wants to feel. And I'm that one that other people feel. It's just such a cool, cool chorus. And then the bridge, the gutters bruise unprotective of his jewels. Truthfully, you see us between the shepherds and the wolves. Ooh, that could be a deep line. So there's shepherds and 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 wolves out there, right? There's people who protect the sheep and there's people who prey on the sheep. And um and nobody's really black and white one or the other, unfortunately. There are some people who seem to be just complete wolves. Don't get me wrong. And there are some people who do a pretty damn good job at being a shepherd. But most people, they teeter on it and they become a wolf sometimes and they try to be a shepherd or hopefully they try to be a shepherd. This hollow rattle for young sheep run deep. <clears throat> one want feed, one want eat, one want leap, one want reap. One wants to feed, one wants to eat. So somebody wants to feed everybody, feed the community. One wants to just eat. One wants to lead, lead the tribe, lead the family. The other one wants to reap it. They wants to take everything from the family, take everything from the tribe. One wants to teach, like Ka. One wants to kill, like these rappers rapping about killing people. One want feast. One want build. So one wants to sit back and in gluttony eat everything. And the other one wants to build. Build to a brighter future. Amazing poetry, man. This song is so deep. I can't believe I didn't cover this earlier. <laughs> Um, back to the other chorus. I'm that one, one real. Keep it one, unreal. And then the outro here. Do I do the outro? I'll do the outro. Damn, it's a long video. <laughs> I'm here to preserve the culture. That's what I'm here to do and build in the process while I'm doing this. For babies, I'll continue to do this. It's a beautiful art. I just want to continue passing on to the next generation as it was passed on to me. You know what I'm saying? Now while I hold the torch, I ain't trying to drop the torch. Nah, I mean. <laughs> I want to hold it high like you know what I'm saying. I got pride in this. That's why I do it. I was doing this since I was eight years old. It's what I was born to do. It's my gift. Special. So that just that just sums up everything that just happened in the song perfectly. He wants to learn, study, build, pass it on to the next generation. It's just beautiful, man. This is like a really humanist song. Um, lots of gold in here. Lots of important life lessons. I think everybody should be able to glean something from the video that you're watching now and from this song. So, wow. What a writer, man. What a writer. I really, I don't know if there's any other writers in the game that are quite on this level. Like, there's some of the obvious ones, like, I think Billy Woods is close. I think Kendrick Lamar is definitely there, but, damn. Just lines that make you think. You know, there's there's lines that make you think, like, real G's move in silence like lasagna, where it's like a funny metaphor, and you get it later. And you're like, oh, that's what that meant. That's funny. And then there's lines that make you think... Like, I'm always on watch for wolves. I have shepherd's eyes. And you're like, damn. I want to live my life by that quote. And Ka just... He busts out so many in every single song. It's amazing. His writing ability is special. A true, true poet. And uh, I'm just happy to be able to talk about it on here. <laughs> so, yeah. That's kind of all I have to for today. That's the whole song, so... Let me know in the comments what I should do next. Should I, I'm going to finish Descendants of Cain, still getting around to that. And then uh, maybe I'll do the other Ka albums. It seems to be pretty consistent that you guys like these ones. So maybe I'll do the rest of Ka's discography and then we'll find a different artist for me to cover. But one song I was thinking about doing because I've just been re-listening to it recently is High Power by Kendrick Lamar. I think it's a very deep song and I think... I think I could do a pretty good analysis of that one. So if you guys want to see that, let me know in the comments as well. Um, as always, like I'll do any genre. 
I'll, I'll do rock songs. I'll do folk songs. I'll do country songs. The only stipulation is like, I have to read the lyrics and, and find some depth. Right. So I'm not going to cover like a, a yeet song. And I love yeet. <laughs> I'm a big yeet fan <laughs> just cause like, it's so fun. His music's so fun. And he's my age, which is also kind of cool, but there's no yeet lyrics where I'm like, Oh man, that's so deep. Let's make a whole video about it, about it. So yeah, as long as the music is somewhat deep, I will do any genre. I myself listen to like all genres of music. So, so yeah, let me know in the comments and, uh, don't forget to like, and subscribe. It helps boost this channel in the algorithm. I want to get to hundred subscribers soon. We're almost there. I think I'm at like 82. So let's get to that 100. And, um, and yeah, thank you guys for watching as always. It means a lot. I'll catch you guys in the next one and peace.